Hello, my name's David Jetson and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the CD-DVD-ROM generator package, also known as CD-Gen. In the CD-Gen package you get three programs, the generator to generate your project to be burnt, the recording unit controller to oversee burning to the disk and creating an image, and the master disk checker to check the volume information. I shall cover all of these in this talk. To get hold of CDGen you have to first buy a license from SCEE or SCEA depending on your studio's territory. Then you must download the package from the PS2 Pro website, search for it or navigate the project trees to find it. One license entitles you to all future releases. Let's start by using CDGen to create a project. This is what you see when you open the program. You are given the choice to open an existing project or to create a new project. Then you are given the choice to select a CD, a DVD or dual layer DVD project. I shall explain the difference between these as we go along throughout the talk, but for now we shall start with a CD project. There are three main views in CD Gen, namely Volume, Directory and Layout View. You can choose them using these buttons or from the drop down menu. To help me demonstrate CDGen, I shall use the CD DVD speed test sample, which is available on the PS2 Pro website. Just search for the sample or navigate through the project tree to find it and download it onto your computer. If you wish, you can experiment with this sample and CDGen to get to grips with the features I show you within this guide. In the sample we've downloaded, there are five files for burning. Of course your projects may have a lot more, but in this example we have an IOP image file and two IOP modules, the bootable ELF file and system.cnf which contains the following parameters. The first parameter is boot2 parameter which is a full path to the title's bootable ELF on the disk. And then we have the version number which you must remember to update for resubmissions and then you have the video mode which is PAL for SCE regions or NTSC for all others. So once you have your files ready you want to add them to the project we move to directory view and then the simplest way is to just drag a file or a group of files like so and they are added to the project. If we now attempt to record after just adding these files, we are told that we can't yet because we haven't filled in the volume details. So we go to volume view and the first field we have to fill in is the disk name. This is the same as the product code which obviously matches the bootable elf and is in the boot2 parameter as shown earlier. The next fields are the producer, the copyright holder and the licensing area which for SCE must be Europe like shown. The next fields are optional you can give the volume a name and also for multi-disc titles you can give the set of discs a name and fill in the publisher and the name of the person or company that created the disc in the data prepare field. The last view to cover is layout view in this view we can see the red files which are disk head of information and the black files are the files that we've added ourselves. You can also see the location of each file where it starts and ends on the disk. If you wish to change the order of the files on the disk then you just click the file you want to move and drag it to its new location. This can also be done via the right click menu. So we have our files as we want them and we click to record. We're told we can't because we haven't got a long enough CD. Should this happen to you, you right click the first file and choose location and enter a large enough number so that the data is put out further on the disk. This probably won't happen to you with bigger projects, but during development it might crop up. Before burning you should really check the preferences, make sure that the default licensing area is correct and that the disk ID is enabled. This is disk serialization and is needed for all submissions. So now it's really time to save our project. So we click File, Save As, enter an appropriate name and save as you usually do. Then just to prove it we can shut down the program then reopen it and successfully open our saved project. So we've successfully made a CD project, it's now time to look at DVDs and see how they differ slightly. So we create a new DVD project 
add the same files as before and fill in the volume details like before. This time we'll only do the necessary ones. Then if we move to layout view and click to record, we're told that we can't because we haven't filled enough sectors on the DVD. We must span at least 600,000 sectors, so to get around this we right click the first file, click location and enter a large enough number so that we satisfy this condition. Another difference with DVDs is that we have an extra setting to add dummy data to the disk. This adds 20 megabytes of null data to the outermost part of the disk and attempts to bring the behavior of a master disk into a line with that of general media. For more information, see the precautions when using DVD-R for general media technical note on the PS2 Pro website. Now I should just save this project so that we may use it later on if we wish. So now the only project left to show is a dual layer DVD project. When we start this we are shown layer 0 and to this we must add the bootable elf and the system.cnf file and any other files we want to. If you click the blue arrow at the top you then switch to layer 1 of the DVD to which you can add any other files you wish. Currently CDGen does not support dual layer DVDs so at the moment each separate layer is recorded onto a separate DVD. Just as before, we still need to add volume detail, and this is only done for layer 0 though. Again, using the blue arrow, you can switch between layers when you wish to, and this is useful for checking out the layout of your files. So to summarize the generator, we have directory view where you add your files. Your elf and system.cnf must be in the root directory here. Then we have the volume view where you fill in the disk information. The first four fields are a must. Then layout view is where you change the order and or location of your files. Now let's look at recording our project via the recording unit controller. So to move on to recording, in CDGen with a project open, you click record and it asks to save a temporary IML file. This tells the recording unit controller, which automatically appears, where the files to be burned are located, and also contains the volume information. As this is a CD project we're burning, the CD drive is automatically selected. You can see that this is the only CD writing drive by looking in Options Inquiry. The write speed for the drive is automatically set to the highest, but you can change this to a low speed if you wish and we would recommend burning at a lower speed to reduce the chances of errors on your disk. As you can see there are five buttons at the bottom of the screen. Record is to burn your disk or create an image. Verify is to check that your burn was successful. Check calls master disk checker to validate your volume information. Stop aborts the record process and quit exits the program. If you don't yet wish to burn your disk you can just export the image to be loaded up later. This involves you saving a .lst file and outputs a number of image files depending on the size of your project. Before actually recording a disk, you can test the burning process by using test record mode in option setting. When you click record you're given the option to record on the fly and or create an image, but either way you do not actually burn the disk. Instead, the program checks to see that it's possible to burn the disk. The image is created, but in this case I have not put the disk in the drive, so the test process concurs that the CDR unit is not ready. When you are ready to burn your disk, you click the record button, and you're offered the choice of on the fly or create image file. On the fly just burns the disk, whereas create image file creates an image file and also burns a disk. So for on the fly we get a brief setup phase then a longer lead-in phase. Uh, this takes some time so you have to bear with it. Then finally, fingers crossed, you get the recording phase.
which obviously continues until the disk is successfully burnt or not. If you click verify after burning a disk, the program checks that the data on the disk was burnt correctly. A certain number of submission disks must be verified depending on the territory. If we click check, the master disk checker program is called to validate the volume information recorded on the disk. In this case the volume information is successfully retrieved and shown on the display. If we now quit out of this and open our DVD project in CDGen, then click record and save our temporary IML file again. You shall see that the recording unit controller automatically comes up with a DVD drive selected now. Also notice that it says sector instead of time now because we're dealing with a DVD. If you have the recording unit controller open and you wish to load a different image to burn then just go file import image and choose the one you want. So to summarize using the recording unit controller the basic things you must do are check the drive and write speed Use valid media and valid drive, see the readme that comes with the package, and click record and choose burning disk or create an image. Then for submissions you must remember to check all disks and verify the correct number of disks depending on your territory. Then the other options you have are test record mode and the export image file option. And now a brief look at checking your disks. We've seen Master Disk Checker called via the Recording Unit Controller, but it can be opened up as its own separate program. If you choose a drive that has a burnt disk in it, and click Check, then the Master Disk Checker will verify it and show the results on the screen. Of course, for dual layer disks, you have to check each layer, i.e. each disk, separately. Of course, if we attempt to check a dual layer DVD, when in fact we have a CD in the CD drive, for example, Master Disk Checker complains about this. In this final section, I shall show you what help there is available to you, and offer you little bits of advice. Should you have any problems with the CD Gen at all, the help provided with the program should be your first port of call. In this is a troubleshooting section, with advice should certain scenarios arise and there is also a messages section which should help you identify the cause of your error warnings. Creating a project is often very easy and problem free. However the same cannot always be said for burning the project. So here's a quick checklist if you are having trouble burning a disk or if your burnt disk is faulty. So try to make sure that you're connected up correctly, using correct drive and media, leaving time between burns so that the drive does not overheat, burning at a low enough speed that is sensible, and closing down all unnecessary programs that may be on in the background. Following these guidelines will help eliminate a lot of problems. When you were forced to export an IML file prior to recording, an IMS file was also produced. If either of these are hidden and you attempt to record, you will find that your recording will fail. This is because these two files contain information needed for the recording, like the location of the files and the volume information. If you open these files up in text editors, you should find that there are also paths to the files within them. So if you start moving files around, you will also experience trouble when recording. Similarly, if you move any of the image files exported, or the paths within these are incorrect and not up to date, then when you go to record you shall also encounter some problems. This all goes to show that you must be very careful when moving files around, especially from one computer to another.
On the PS2 Pro website, you have at your disposal the CD-DVD starting guide. This is very useful, especially for first-time users. And you also have the relevant technical notes, which you should keep up to date with. I mentioned one earlier about general media and dummy data. The latest TRC documents can also be downloaded from the website. These contain the essential rules that you must follow when creating master disks and using CDGen. Make sure you follow this to ensure that your submission is TRC compliant. If you are unclear about any of the requirements, then the supplement that accompanies the main TRC contains extra detail for some points. And of course, if you can't find what you're looking for there, there are also the news groups and the ski support email.